Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you know me, you know I like to get straight to the point. So like, share, comment, subscribe, do what you do, and let's get to it. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the lovely, lovely, lovely Frontier Go Wild All You Can Fly Pass. I've been seeing so many negative comments about it and people having bad experiences, and I just, I don't, I don't understand why, because my experiences with it have been mwah, 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 mwah. So I'm going to share with you guys how it works why you should or shouldn't get it because this is not for everyone let's keep that in mind please okay guys so let's talk about what frontiers go wild pass is so this is a pass that you can buy annually monthly summer pass or fall and winter pass and you can pay for those and then once you have that pass you're able to fly as much as you want with frontier wherever they go in the world for just the taxes which is usually around 15 to 30 bucks give or take per flight because they do have to pay like airport fees and stuff so every time you take a flight so if there's a layover or whatever it's going to make it a little more expensive but keep in mind that is usually much 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 cheaper than any other way so with that being said the annual uh pass right now is roughly two thousand dollars for the year now they were running ads for this running ads <laughs> Now they were running um, promotions for this and I actually got my annual pass for $600 for the whole entire year during Black Friday. So I was one of one of the very first people to actually get this. And I was a little skeptical at first, but I'm glad it all worked out. The next option you have is summer and that's roughly from April to September. And that one is $500 and you can fly unlimited throughout that time. And then we have the winter fall pass, which is September through February-ish, and that one's roughly $300. And then you have the month to month, which is about 150 right now with no initiation fee. So once you buy one of those passes, you'll have access to the just taxes pricing online. Keep in mind, there are blackout dates. So you need to kind of plan ahead and make sure that you're not trying to travel on those days, or just, I mean, just keep it in mind, to be honest. All right, next, here are the things that you need to keep in mind. One, if you are booking a domestic flight, then you can only book it within 24 hours. So if you are trying to go to Miami and come back next week on a round trip, you wouldn't be able to book that until the day before. And then if it's a round trip, you can't book your return flight until you're pretty much in Miami there, and then you can book it on the last day. 24 hours so for some people this is a huge no-no they're they're not flexible enough for this kind of thing so if you're unable to have like a backup plan if you have to be somewhere then this isn't for you definitely not for you next if you're doing international there's a little more flexibility you do have 10 days for international travel however if you're booking round trip international it's the same thing if the whole trip isn't within the 10 day span, then you're not gonna be able to book your return flight until that return flight becomes 10 days. Keep in mind that Frontier does not go to every single airport. For example, I live in Los Angeles, but Frontier doesn't fly out of LAX. So my two options are to either drive to Orange County or drive to Ontario. And for some people that might just not work in itself because it might be too far, it might not be worth it anymore. I don't know what your situation is. So I highly suggest you check the airports, you check where Frontier goes, and you just make sure that the airports that you would wanna go to are available. That's definitely very, very important. It's so pointless to use this if you can't go anywhere that you wanna go. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And with that being said, Frontier does fly to many places domestically and they fly to the Caribbean and Latin America. So honestly, for some of these prices and the places you could go, this is totally, totally worth it. Another fun fact, uh, Frontier's hubs, well, main hubs that they have a lot, 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 a lot of flights go, out, go in and out of are Vegas and Denver. So if you can't find a flight directly from your airport to some other place, try it from your airport to Vegas or your airport to Denver and then from Denver to the other place. Just play with it first, see where you can and can't go. I highly, highly, highly suggest that. And lastly, let's talk about 
the baggage fees and the seat fees that you can actually avoid. So you can definitely avoid the baggage fees by using this company called Take Off Luggage. They have uh, created this interesting piece of luggage that's a carry-on, but once you take off the wheels, it fits into the personal item container. So that would eliminate you paying for a carry-on bag with Frontier, and that would become your personal bag. And there you go, you don't have to pay for a bag. And then the beauty of it too, they also have um, these mini vacuums and the, the vacuum Ziploc thingies that you put your stuff in and vacuum it. That way you can vacuum seal your clothes and be able to get more into your luggage that you don't have to pay for. It's, it's so beautiful. I'm gonna end up doing a video for that, so stay tuned. Next up, you also don't have to pay for your seat. I know sometimes you want what you want, but you can kind of have an idea of what's open. And to be quite honest, like if it's something that's pretty tight and there's only like one or two window seats, I might buy it depending on the price since I don't have to pay for bags and usually the seats are not that expensive, ranging between like 15 to 100 at max for like their version of first class. If you're dying for a seat, I guess. If not, if it's not the end of the world, if you're going somewhere that's like an hour or something, not a big deal, you can definitely just not uh, pick a seat. When you get to the airport, they'll just pick one for you and therefore you have a seat without having to pay. And then what I like to do is be one of the last people to board because I don't wanna just sit on a plane and wait for everyone else because we're already gonna sit on the plane for so long as it is. So I'm one of the last people to board and I can kind of have an idea of what seats are empty or actually empty versus what I saw on the computer. And then I can kind of just assume, well, the doors are probably gonna close within two minutes of me entering the plane. So I can assume that most of these seats are empty and that I'll be able to move to them. And that's usually what I do. There's many times where I've just sat in a seat and didn't even say anything and nobody said anything to me. I had the whole world to myself because of that. So that's definitely the loophole. So to sum this up, this is for people who are flexible. This is for people who work from home. This is for people who have lounge access that don't care if their flight is delayed or miss their flight or have to wait till tomorrow. This is for those people that just kind of don't really care if they get stuck somewhere. And that is definitely me. And that's why this works for me. So stay tuned because I'm actually going to be going to Dallas tomorrow and I'm going to be using the Frontier Pass and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it step by step. I'm going to log in and walk you through every single step and then I'm going to take you to the airport with me and we're going to see if this flight is going to be delayed or it's on time and if I'm going to make it to my event and I'm going to come back and we're going to just see what happens. And just so you guys know, um, just from looking at it so far, my ticket is going to end up being $30 round trip from Orange County to Dallas. So stay tuned and catch you next time.